and then light adjust. So if you watch the other tutorials, you you see me do this before. All right, it's it's very very just the step boom 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 knock those in. So right here, it's already trying to fit into the scenes. So if I zoom this way out, way out, so it's like a tiny little thing. You can see that he's starting to fit in photorealistically into the shot. Okay, so let's continue adding a few more layers, just adjusting his feet. We adjust some of the lighting, bounce light and so forth. Some additional details, I'll zoom in on his hand. You can see here. There. So far we haven't really adjusted any kind of uh, hardcore lighting, right? It's just kind of punching him out, his silhouette. But we do start adjusting some stuff. For example, the bounce light into the warm of this street here, bouncing into his leg, right? And then we have the bounce from the other side of the street because these surfaces are facing down. These are all facing down. So they're all going to get this kind of warmish bounce from these um, from the freeway here. Uh, same with all these areas. going to bounce in. This car is going to bounce. So let's zoom out here. Boom. Here are some just very quick uh, things to uh, make the illusion work, right? We are making a optical illusion here. We're, we're creating robots that doesn't exist in the picture, but we're trying to fake the human eye to think that it is it is in there. So this little layer here just adjusts some of the reflections that's hitting the car here. See, here's our natural. By adding this little um, reflections, his hand, his arm reflecting to the car, the human eye gets tricked. It gets fooled into thinking, oh, this thing is actually there, All right? Here's a, a pass on the uh, details, but before we do that, let's tri put the, his shadows back on. Make sure, okay, so this is a shadow layer. You can see we just extracted the uh, the direction of the shadow from the cars, and also we extracted the same color palette. See this kind of cool, almost purplish um, gray. So we put this in here to, again, all these tricks to try to fool the eye to think that this uh, robot is actually in the photo. Okay, so on and off, you can see what that does. And then once the values are set, let's turn the black and white layer on. It's still quite dark overall, right? But it's enough for me to start uh, painting him. If I blur my eyes, right, you could do the same on this video. Just blur your eyes. You can sort of see him fitting into the scene. So we turn these on. So here's where I start bound, uh, putting a lot of the bounce lights, especially you can see his crotch area, his um, these legs areas here. A lot of bounce light from the warm freeway, right? Even his stomach area is facing below. So let's just turn this layer on off. You can see that a lot of stuff that's facing the ground gets this warm uh, bounce from the freeway. It's quite nice. It's a cool warm, right? It's warm light, but it's cool in context. So hopefully that's not that makes sense to you guys. All right. There's warm, warm, and there's a cool warm, right? Which is a warm color, but it's essentially as a whole, it's cool. Okay. I'm talking about temperature here, you know, temperature of uh, uh, the light with a color palette. There's a cool, warm pellets. Okay. Additional lighting. So here we start taking account of materials. So for example, uh, these metal surfaces here that's going away from the eye is going to pick up a lot of uh, very hot reflections. Which in this case is the sky because remember the angle of your eye viewing the object goes in the same direction. So boom, boom. So my eye essentially is right here, right? So it's hard to draw this in 3D. So my eye is here. Doom. Do coming the same angle, so these surfaces are going to start hitting some of the stuff um, that's going away from me, right? Same with uh, some of these areas here, right? Boom, boom, slanting that surface, so it's going to hit. Uh, same with this uh, areas on top, a little bit here and there. Let's continue adding on some of these details. Here I'm warming up again. This is dealing with materials here. These are metallic surfaces on this robot, so I want to make sure that the metal has a certain sheen to it. It has a lot of uh, self. Uh, I uh, guess uh, materials that are very very reflective so it gives these nice uh, highlight cores and shadows uh, that appears on metal. And here's where I start adjusting the value. Turn this layer on and off, you can see what that does. If I turn on the black and white, you can see value adjusting. So this way I can also, also extract them out from the, um, the vehicle here. You can see the vehicle is matching, now the robot's behind the vehicle. So we're using this vehicle as a way to serve, uh, again, part of the perspective tricks, right? When the human eye sees this car and sees the leg behind it, then we assume that um, this robot is behind the vehicle, therefore building up a sense of space between here and there. Okay. These are little hot highlights. These are things I was talking about earlier where these cars are getting a very similar treatment. You can see here, right, it's reflecting the sun. Then we put in those same highlights in our uh, robot, which makes things very believable in a way. right? Even if it's quickly indicated, like this hand area here, you can see how convincing that is by adding just little things of very hot, you know, almost 100% white highlights. 
very convincing uh, to the eye to say that they're metallic, just like these cars. Okay. Additional bounce light. I felt like the stomach was still a little flat, so we bounced in a few more warm lights. And then final details added. I'll draw a few more details on this when, it, uh, when I'm done, done turning all these layers on and off. I'll show you how they're added. Right, just painting on top, selecting local value and painting. So in a production painting like this, typically when you do it in a studio, you know, depending on your time schedule, you have to work very, very fast because uh, at this stage, most films are not green yet uh, when you're doing these, you know, where they're kind of close to green, but not really. Green meaning that it's going to go into production and it's going to get millions of dollars in your funding. Uh, so you're doing all these paintings under a very quick time restraint as well as budget, which comes together, right? Budget and time, they're pretty much tied together. So if the budget's lower because the film is not green, then the uh, production house will want to do these very, very fast and they want many as they can. So you know they don't have the luxury to say, hey, now go go do a hundred paintings. They can't. They're like, uh, you know, we have a week, do as many as you can. So for artists, we could do maybe um, uh, maybe six, seven paintings in about a week of this kind of caliber, right? a little bit higher quality than this. And so if you hire three, four guys on, you have end up with about 40, 50 paintings, which is quite good. Um, you know, because you got rough ones, you got tight ones. You get some guys who just do storyboards, you paint those up. So between three, four. Uh, so maybe sometimes five. Five is pretty high for pre-production stage. But about three to four designers working for two, three weeks, you end up with uh, quite a bit of paintings. You, you have enough paintings to actually cover the majority of the important sequences uh, on a film. Okay, and that's what typically these these um, uh, paintings do. So everyone in the art department, uh, especially on uh, films like Transformers, uh, everybody paints uh, because we have to contribute. And then everyone designs, and then everyone does storyboards. Right? It's it's kind of like you have to be able to do everything because uh, they don't want to switch designers. You don't want to do these paintings and then switch to someone else to design the robots. Right? You want to keep everyone, the, the, keep the crew very consistent throughout the project. So it's important. This kind of production painting skills is very important, especially if you want to get into the film industry because that's all they do, uh, in, especially in the beginning of pre-production stage. Right? Line drawings and stuff don't sell big giant budgeted films, you know what I'm saying? Because producers and such, when they see a line drawing, uh, they can't really, they can't envision what this film could be. Uh, you have to paint it out for them to see that. Okay, so uh, so I'll just, I'll just share those things with you uh, time to time about production stuff. Okay, so this this layer here is the texture layer. So this is the freebie stuff, right? At this point, this painting still looks kind of handmade, right? It looks hand-painted because of time. So how can we achieve a more photorealistic density? Because here, if you look at the cars, right, the density is very, very high. So we want to match that in our uh, in our painting. So what we do is we bring in some photo elements that has the same density, and this again will play a trick on the eye to think that oh, this is maybe maybe it's real, maybe it's fake. What am I looking at? You know. So, so you can see here the layer turning on and off. The amount of detail that just happened in this hand by simply adding a photo texture increases dramatically. It goes from hand painted to somehow looking like a um, uh, CG rendering, right, or something that's real, like a fo photo um, collage of some kind, right? Because you you see details that are very very high dense, high density. So I'll show you what some of these uh, might look like. Let's find the one that goes into his hand here. So okay, here's the one that went into his hand. It's on overlay right now. So if I turn to normal, you see that it is a machine part of some kind, right? You can see his entire body it looks like this. Right, a lot of machine parts from um, various photo references I have. Some of these are motorcycles. You can see motorcycle parts in some of these, pistons and engine parts. But as soon as I put these on a different layer set, they start merging in with my values. So again, your values is important because that's these photographs, um, these photo textures you're using will basically rely on the values you have behind it. All right, so if you have good values set, they merge in very, very nicely. If you don't have good values, they'll pop too much. You'll see that it looks like a bad Photoshop crop job. All right? So it's always important to paint stuff first, you know, get your values down. Or it doesn't matter to paint first, but whatever you're doing, balance the values. Once you balance it, it's so much easier to add anything you want to. You want details, lighting, whatever. It's all so much easier to do. You can see here's the black and white layer. See these photo textures doesn't mess with my values. They stay whoops, wrong layer. They stay within that. 